Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll be covering how to view multiple charts within Thinkorswim, create multiple different chart templates, and how to detach the charts to view them on multiple different monitors. Now let's go ahead and jump into how to create multiple different charts since it's probably the simplest thing we can do on here. Now we're gonna start this off with the charts tab. So we're gonna come up here to charts at the top and make sure we have the chart sub tab selected. Now, right now you can see I'm looking at a very simple chart right now. I've got Corsair pulled up there, CRSR. Down below, I do have a little bit of a custom script, IV rank, IV percentile. But again, it's a pretty simple uh, chart setup right now. Now, let's say I wanted to look at a four grid layout. So I wanted to have Corsair in the upper left-hand corner. Right next to it, I also wanted to look at Amazon and maybe Microsoft and Facebook as well. Now, on the charts page, the way that we do this is by looking up here in the upper right-hand corner. You're going to see like a little square icon. All we have to do is go ahead and click on that square. From there, we're going to highlight how many charts we want to see. Now, in this example, I wanted two on top and two on bottom. So we've got that highlighted right here, and we're just going to go ahead and click on it. From there, you're going to see four charts open up, but they are blank templates. So what we're going to have to do is go ahead and throw in, I think we said Microsoft is the first one. We're going to go ahead and throw in Facebook down here in the lower right-hand corner, and we'll throw Google over here on the bottom right. Now you're gonna notice right off the bat, they look nothing like this chart we made before. They're different time periods. They're all 30 day, one hour charts. And none of them have that, uh, that study that we added at the bottom, IV rank and IV percentile. Now here's a quick little tip how to save you a lot of time going forward if you do have a chart template in the back of your mind that you always want it to mimic. What we can do is save this as our default layout. So if we wanted this chart up here to be our default layout, we want it to look exactly like this anytime we opened up a new chart. All we have to do is come up here to the little settings button. They look like two little candlesticks. We're gonna go ahead and click on that. From there, we're gonna go down to set as chart default and go ahead and click on that. It's gonna tell us up at the top, do we really want to set this current chart as the default? We're gonna go ahead and say yes. Now it's gonna look like nothing actually changed on our screen, which is technically the case because these charts are already set up. It's not gonna magically change them all to mimic this one. But if we were to go back to a single chart, so coming up here to the top right, go back to a single chart, Come back up here to the top right, click on the square again, go back to four, and put your symbols back in there. So we put Microsoft, we put Facebook, and we put Google. You're gonna see that now all four of those mimic this top left chart because we set this as the default. Now I'd recommend you only set the chart default as something you're actually gonna use constantly. Otherwise, you're gonna have it open up as this template every time and maybe you don't want it to have these specific indicators. But you can see adding additional charts to this, uh, this layout right here is incredibly easy. Again, you just have to come up here to the square in the upper right hand corner, highlight how many you wanna see, and then just go ahead and click on it. And to be honest, you're really only gonna be limited to the size of your monitor. If you have a huge screen, you could add as many charts as you want and fit them in there. But for me, this is about as much as I could possibly do because these charts get very, very small. At a certain point, I can't see enough detail for them to actually be useful. Now, one other quick little tip, if you see on the right-hand side here, these little side panels, like these buttons, trade buttons, time and sales, active trader buttons, right now you can see that there are on each individual chart. And if we added a symbol over here, you would see that each additional chart, as long as they have a symbol, will have that side panel open. But for a lot of people who don't wanna see that, that's a lot of wasted space. So what we could do is come up here to the square again, up here in the upper right-hand corner, and we're gonna come down right here where it says show sidebar in cells and go ahead and uncheck that. You're gonna notice that immediately that sidebar disappears, which means we can't use any of those little helpful tools on the right hand side anymore. And if we wanted to add them back to the charts, we'd have to come back here to the squares and recheck show sidebar in cells. And if we wanted to, we could actually make this grid composed of things that are not just charts. Like right here where we got the Facebook chart, we could go ahead and uncheck chart and we could actually throw up Active Trader right there or we could throw up maybe time and sales information or level two data. We don't have to put a chart in each one of these little grids. It can be whatever we really want to use. And we could also size them by putting our mouse right here between the two charts and dragging it right or left if we wanted one chart to be bigger than the other. But customizing the charts themselves is not too tricky. And again, adding them very, very simple up here in the top right. Now the next one up is the flexible grid. This one's gonna be slightly different. So let's go ahead and click on that to open it up. Right now, you can see that I technically have three different charts right here. Now, I'm not using them all as charts. Up at the top, you can see a Corsair chart, but down here in the bottom left, I can see level two data. In the middle, we've got time and sales information. And then in the lower right, we've got an active trader ladder. Now, you're also gonna see that they're all linked up together. So if I change one of them, let's say I wanted to look at Facebook, you're gonna notice that all three of them change to Facebook. So level two for Facebook, time and sales for Facebook, and my active trader Facebook. Now, the way that you edit the grid is gonna be kind of in the same location. You're gonna come up here to the top right-hand corner where you see those little square icons. 
We're gonna go ahead and click on that. And from there, we're gonna click on the little button that says customize grid. We're gonna go ahead and check mark that. Now you're gonna notice right off the bat, it opens up a little window in the center of each chart. And what this little window does is allow you to either add additional charts to the screen or remove charts from the screen. So let's say for example, we wanted to add a chart to the right of this big top one up here at the top. We're gonna go ahead and click on this little plus sign right here in the middle. You're gonna see a chart immediately gets added to the right hand side. Let's say we wanted a chart above this one right here. We're gonna go ahead and click on this little plus sign on the, on the far left hand side. So you should notice right off the bat that this thing is much more customizable than the actual charts page. It can be a little bit of a pain to set it up exactly the way that you like it, but once you do, it's very, very useful. And then to remove some of these, like we didn't want these little two side ones right here. We're gonna go ahead and click on the square with a line through it and do the same thing to this one. Now you're also gonna see in those little center squares is something that says sidebar with a little check mark next to it. Remember the sidebar references these little tabs on the right hand side. If we wanted to get rid of that sidebar, all we have to do is uncheck this. To bring it back, just go ahead and click the check mark once again. Once you're happy with the layout, you're happy with the way that it looks, you have it set up the way that you like it, just come back up here to the little dots in the upper right hand corner and then uncheck customize grid. That way we can remove those little squares that are in the center of each one of the screens. Now, once you create a layout that you really like and you wanna keep it for future use, what I would really recommend is that you save it. So looking right here at my flexible grid, let's say this is my day trading layout and I wanted to save it as such. We're gonna come back up here to little dots in the upper right hand corner and we're gonna say save flexible grid as. From there, I wanna go ahead and name it. Let's say we wanted to name it active trader grid and we'll go ahead and hit save. Now what that does is save this template. So if I was to change it for some reason, I was to recustomize it, let's say I deleted all of these, and now I'm back to a single Facebook chart, what I could do is very quickly reload my Active Trader grid. And the way that I did that was just by coming up here to the dots in the upper right hand corner. I can see my pre-made templates. I've got one named one, one named Active Trader grid, which is the one we just saved. If I go ahead and click on that, you're gonna see current flexible grid layout will be reloaded. Are you sure you want to load this configuration? We're going to say yes, we do. So hit OK. And you can see it loads up exactly how we had it just a second ago. And I could go ahead and go to that other grid. I'm not even sure what the number one grid is, but let's go ahead and open it up. Oh, it's just a default template. So it's exactly what you guys will see the very first time you log into this page. But since I want to go back, we'll go ahead and click on those dots. Active Trader Grid. Hit OK. And there we go. And you can save grids for the chart the exact same way. You just come up here to the charts page once again. Let's say we wanted to save this template. For some reason, we really like this five by five chart layout. So we're gonna come up here to the squares in the upper right. We're going to save grid as, and let's go ahead and name this one five by five. And we'll go ahead and hit save. Now to access that, again, all I have to do is come up here to the squares and I can see all of the grids that I've created over in the past. So five by five, enter grid name one. Clearly I wasn't very creative with that one. And the dates, February 10th, February 21st, volatility, these are all different chart layouts. Since I'm not sure what volatility is, let's go ahead and click on that and load it. You can see all it is is a chart with historical volatility at the bottom versus implied volatility, as well as IV, IV rank, and IV percentile up at the top. But now I can quickly access other templates that I've created on here. Now, the last thing we're gonna talk about is how to detach these charts and move them to our other monitors. Now, this is very easy to do, and all we need to do is come up here to the top right-hand corner of whatever window we wanna detach, and this could be applied across the board, whether it's the charts page, flexible grid, trade page, doesn't really matter. All you have to do is come up here to the three little lines in the top right hand corner. From there, you're gonna to look towards the bottom of this little window here, and you're gonna see a little button called detach. Once you click on that, it's gonna create a separate window. You're gonna see I just dragged it in front of you guys on this side of the screen. This is a little pop-up window, and you're gonna notice right off the bat, it doesn't have the same tabs up here at the top. You're gonna to see it's only a charts tab. But from here, we could drag this over to our other monitors and set it up exactly the way we want it. And this is our platform. So if we place a trade from this screen, we are placing a trade in our account. And this detachable window can be customized just like we customize all of the other ones. We can open up four grids. We could open up six grids. Whatever we wanted it to be, we could go ahead and quickly access it. To get rid of that detach window, all we have to do is hit the X in the upper right hand corner and it goes away. Now, if you've got multiple monitors and you have this thing set up exactly the way you have it, you've detached like 10 different windows, you have them all placed up the way that you like them, and you're afraid to close out a thinkorswim because you don't wanna do all this work over again. So what I would really recommend you guys do is come up here to Setup in the top right-hand corner and come down to Save Workspace As. When you save the workspace, it's gonna save where you have those detached windows on your multiple monitor setup. This way, every time you log into thinkorswim, those detached windows will go exactly where you last left them. 
if something were to change, let's say you you uh, log in and it's all reset, you only have one monitor and you're like, man, this is gonna be such a headache to reset up. All you're gonna have to do is come up here to set up in the top right, come down and find the workspace. In my case, I've only got one and it's called February 13th workspace. If I was to click on that and load it, it's gonna be saved as whatever template I created. And honestly, I have no idea what the template was, so I'm not gonna click on it for this example because I don't wanna reset my whole platform. But that's pretty much it. This should have been a pretty quick video. Hopefully that answers all your questions about viewing multiple charts, saving templates, and detaching the charts themselves, smooth them to other monitors. If I did miss anything, or you guys have any additional questions about Thinkorswim or trading in general, please leave them down below in the comments. Also, if you did make it to the end, please leave the video a like. It actually helps out the channel quite a bit. And as always, let's all try to make some money this week, and I'll catch you all on the next video.